Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to XPS Tech. I'm Vineet and this is second part of my two part series on IP tables, which is a Linux tool to create custom firewall. In part one, we covered the basic concept behind the usage of IP tables. And in this video, we'll understand the command syntax and check out how to use IP table on a live system. So if you haven't watched part one, I highly recommend you first watch that and then come to this video. That would make this video way easy to understand. All right, so let's start today's video. Okay, so right now I am on Dippin Linux 15.11, which is the latest version of Dippin Linux. To use IP tables, you just open terminal and start typing IP table commands with root permission. And that's all you have to do to set up your custom firewall. For example, a very simple IP table command is to list out the default table. The command for that is IP tables dash uppercase L dash N dash V. Here L stands for list, that is to list out the table. N is for numeric format and V is for verbose. So since I have not mentioned any specific table name, it gives the result for the default table, which as we discussed in the previous video is the filter table. You can list out other tables also by specifically mentioning the table name using the lowercase t option. So for example, to list out mangle table, type IP tables dash t mangle and then dash capital L dash N dash V and now you get the mangle table listed. Notice that the syntax of IP table is case sensitive. So uppercase A and lowercase A has different meaning. So keep that in mind. All right, now let's quickly understand the output of this command. Now, as discussed in the previous video, the filter table has three chains, input, forward and output. The default policy of every chain in IP table is to accept all traffic. Then you have the packet and byte counters. The table below shows the rule in that chain. Presently, we have not made any rule, hence the table is empty. But let's look at the different columns of the table. Packets and bytes are just the counters. Target is the action component of the rule, which we will look in detail in this video. PROT, PROT is the protocol. OPT is IP options. In and out is the input and output interface. Source and destination is the source IP and destination IP address. All right, so now let's look at the syntax of IP tables in detail. For the sake of understanding, I have divided the syntax into four sections. So the command is IP tables dash lowercase t and then table name, dash options and then name of the chain. Then you have the matching component and at last is the action component. Now let's go through them one by one. So first section is the table name. So here you can give name of any of the five available tables in IP tables. The default table is filter table. So when you skip this part, the rule will be applied to the filter table. Next section deals with chains. So here you select the chain you want the rule to apply. The available chain will depend on the table you have selected in section one. For example, for filter table, you have three chains, but for mangle table, you have five chains available. The options part, gives you control on how to modify the chain. Here are all the options available. These are pretty self-explanatory, but let's just quickly go through them. Also, all the options in this section are used in uppercase. So you have A for appending the rule in the chain, D to delete the chain, I to insert, Z is to zero the packet and byte counters, P is for policy, and E is used to rename the chain. We'll use some of these options when we do the live demo. Okay, now let's move to the third section, which is the matching component. Now this is the important part where you give a condition. If the condition is true, take the action, else move to the next rule in the chain. For example, if source IP address is say XYZ, then reject the packet. Or if the destination port is say 22, then drop the packet. So in a sense, this provides the main function of a firewall to filter the network traffic. Now there's a huge list of parameters available for matching, and it will not be possible for me to go through all of them. But let's go through some of the important ones. To check out all the supported parameters, you can go to this really great website, which gives an in-depth information on IP tables options. The link is available in the description. All right, so the parameters are broadly divided into three types generic, implicit, and explicit. Now the generic options are P for protocol, S for source IP address, D for destination IP address, I for input in interface, O for output interface. Next is the implicit matches, which is based on protocol. Like for TCP, you have 
S port and D port, that is source port and destination port. Similarly, you have options for ICMP and UDP. Now last is the explicit matches. Now here you use match extension and the option to use explicit matches is lowercase m. So dash m option gives you a huge number of parameters and you can make really complex firewall by combining these. However, I'm not going to go over on these extensions to keep this video short and simple. But all the explicit extensions are available in the website that I mentioned before. So you can check that out. Now the last section is the action component. Now this is really simple. Here you specify the action to perform if the matching condition is true. In case of IP tables, the action to do is to jump to either a specific rule or a chain within the same table. Hence you use dash J option. The two basic target to jump is accept and drop target. These two target when given will stop the further traversal of rule in that chain. There are other targets where the packets will continue to traverse to the next rule within the same chain. For example, log and TTL options. Now the available options for action components depends on the table we are dealing with. NAT or mangle table has few more options specific to those table compared to filter table. But following are the most basic and most used options. Accept is to accept the packet and end traversing. Drop is to drop the packet and end traversing. Reject, this is similar to drop, but here an ICMP reject response packet is sent to the source. And the last is return. Now this is to stop packet traverse in that subchain and return to the superior chain with no effect. All right, so now that we have a fairly detailed understanding of IP table syntax, let's now go to a live system and try out some examples of this command. All right, so this is my dip-in machine. Let me first show you the current state of the filter table. The command for that is IP tables dash capital L N and V type in the root password. And as you can see, the filter table is currently empty. We have not made any rule yet. Now let me also open up the browser and show you that the internet is also working. So youtube.com is working fine. Now let's add a rule to block a particular website, which is the most popular feature of any firewall. So let's say we want to block the IIT Bombay website. The address for that is iitb.ac.in. This is the website that we want to block. Now to do that, type in the command sudo ip tables dash a to append a rule in the input chain dash s for source here you can mention the ip address or you can also give the domain name so it's iit b dot ac dot in give a space dash j jump to drop to block the packet you can also use the reject target as well now press enter now if we look at our filter table as you can see the rule has been added it has also done the domain name resolution and pull out the ip address of this particular domain name now let's try to open iit bombay website again so it's iitb.ac.in now as you can see the website is not opening it has been blocked all right now to delete this particular rule from the filter table we use the option dash d so the command is sudo IP tables dash D input chain sorry input and then the rule number and this is the first rule so we type in number one and press enter now if we check the status of filter table the rule has been successfully deleted and the website is again working now this sort of blocking is recommended for a small website which have only one server but for a large website like google or youtube or facebook.com this method may not work because they have multiple servers with multiple ip address it will not be possible for you to get the ip addresses of all their servers so this method is not recommended in such scenario but in that scenario what you can do is you can change the policy to drop and then one by one add website that you want to allow for your users so uh, to change the policy to drop all the packets you type in sudo ip tables dash p for policy the name of the chain uh, sorry the name of the chain input and then 
the policy is drop now press enter now if we look at the filter table as you can see the input policy has been changed to drop now if we try to open a website let's say youtube.com or say google.com or any other websites say facebook.com So it will not work. So in the, the entire network is right now blocked. Now what you can do is you can one by one add website to the table. All right, now to change the policy back to accept, just instead of drop, type accept and press enter. Now the traffic should work. And yes, all the websites are now loading up. All right, so that was all. Um, similarly, you can try out some of the other commands that we discussed in this video. All right, so that was all for today. I hope you're clear with IP tables tool. It is a very powerful tool and, and something that you must know as a advanced Linux user. All right, so thank you all for watching this video. If you like this video, kindly press the like button. If you have any comment, suggestion or feedback, do type that in, in the comment box. And a huge shout out to all the subscribers of XPS Tech channel. Thank you for your support. And thank you again for watching and I'll see you next time.